because I'm not getting any setup. Okay? So what we're going to be covering is we're going to be hitting a lot harder on guidance lines, uh, different tracking modes that we're going to try to break out of the typical stuff. Uh, also, we're going to hit on some tram lines. We're going to touch on uh, Pilco machines. We're going to hit a little bit harder on advanced auto track and setting. Also, a little bit with real sense to finish up with some diagnostics. Now, I do realize we all don't live in flat country, but we do have areas where straight track works. So, when you guys use a straight track, how many people just use straight A plus B? How many people have used any of the other ones that we've seen up there? Perfect. What we're going to be talking about with this is we're going to hit on those other ones a little harder. Uh, any of you guys run multiple machines in a field that would love to share guidance lines? Well, our displays don't do that yet. Sorry. Uh, give it a couple more years so it'll be out. So what we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to hit on those other ones to where this will be a way that we can radio over our coordinates to make sure that we're going to be using the same guidance lines. First one we're going to start start with is going to be A plus heading. Uh, great thing about this one, we can go out and make a guidance line without even driving. So usually to start out with this, pull in the field, pick something on the other side of the field at the direction that you want, and point the nose of your tractor directly at that. Now, who knows where to find the heading that we're going to be pointing? right on our receiver page. So if we come to our receiver page, we look at our GPS course, that's the heading that we are facing. So as we come back to that, we come in here, put our heading in from our GPS page, hit set A, accept, line made. We didn't move an inch. What's that? Right here, GPS course. So right there, we set our guidance line without even moving. Now every once in a while, we do have uh, different people that come and help us out, and you just, you want that line, you've got the way that field needs to be worked, but you don't trust them making that line. This is one way you can make a stop in that field, and you can use anything from a gator to a four-wheeler, as long as we got our equipment on it, and we can make those lines so that when they come back to it, they come over here in the name, as long as you name it something pretty easy to find, they have that guidance line already there waiting. So we know that field's going to get worked the way we want. Auto B. This one is probably one of our more simple ones. With Auto B, of course, we name it. Come over here, our method, we're going to select Auto B. We're going to hit set A and it's going to give us a 50 foot countdown. So as we start driving, it counts from 50 to 0, automatically sets B for us, except line made. The tough part we run into an auto B, in 50 foot on a mile long row, how far can you get off quick? Pretty quick. So this one's a little bit more difficult. Uh, smaller fields, it works really good. We can get in there, make a quick line, get going. Uh, we get into those bigger fields. A plus heading seems to work a little bit better. How many of you guys have used this one at all? For you guys that run multiple machines, this one will probably become your new best friend. Because we come in here, we're gonna take our first machine, and we're going to get that either A plus heading or how we want our line. If you look right here, that's going to give us our set A point. So, latitude, longitude, and heading. As we come over, we can relay that to our other two tractors or our other tractors, put in the same heading, hit accept. That line is going to be the exact same as the very first one. The reasoning why is this point A. If you pull up and this tractor hits set A, it puts the heading in, but the next tractor hits it right here, we just change the angle of our guidance line. So the great thing with this one 
is the Latin long point does not change. So as long as we get our set A and our heading correct, we're going to have that same line. So we'll be able to radio each tractor and use those lines. Uh, that's what we did over there on our setup. We set up one guidance line with a machine, kept all of our track spacings the same. I took my phone and took a picture of the screen, walked to every single one, popped them in, and I didn't have to barely start. Any questions on this one? Now our ultimate accuracy. With our lot and lawn, we have to give it the lat and lawn for point A and for point B. This one does get a little bit more advanced into it. Uh, I've had a few people run it, they like it, it's just a little bit difficult getting your point B. But once again, latitude and launch two points do not move. Now, everybody runs adaptive curves, right? Pretty simple, easy to set up. With our adaptive curves, how many of you guys change the recording source that you use? So as we come into menu, green star, guidance, guidance settings, we're going to come in here to curve track settings. This looks familiar, right? Recording source is set on our finger, which is going to be manual. A lot of times we go in there, we hit record and we start going, right? So every turn, every everything, we get all those lines all over the field. We have two different options that we can get rid of those turns. So, our first one is going to be auto track. On the auto track recording source, it will only document a line while auto track is engaged. So the moment you disengage auto track, that line stops being created. So your next pass, it will not, wherever you disengaged it, that's where it will stop. <laughs> so, we had some issues running with that one. How many people let it auto track through ditches? Not many. People like to take it over, kind of steer through them. But then you get to the other side, you start auto tracking again, there's that gap. So the issue we had with that one is as customers were continually going through those ditches, they hit those spots, auto track would kick out, wouldn't realize it. Next thing you know, we're off in the next pass. With the latest software update we got coming out for this uh, fall, on the auto track recording source, they have an option what they call a gap fill. So if we run through that situation, disengage auto track, drive through that ditch, re-engage, it's going to make a straight line from point A to point B. So if your very next pass is out of that waterway, it's not going to kick out through there when you got to take over. It's going to fill that in for us. The other one, recording source is going to be documentation. With the documentation, same thing as auto track. The only time it's going to create a line is when the implements in the ground and document. So once again, if you pick it up, we will have that gap. But with these two options, when you make those turns on the end, how many times are you watching back and all of a sudden the tractor darts off this way and you just grab it real quick? This will help us curb that. Because now once that little jog you put in there, it recreates it again. So it's going to help us smooth out those adaptive curves a little bit more. Any questions on the recording source before I go off that? On the documentation one, so if you cross the waterway or something with boundary, does it do the gap fill also? Not on documentation, it's auto track only. Okay. How many of you guys remembered last year how to delete adaptive curves? We came into that page, right? What's missing? Deleting adaptive curves. We have a new way of deleting adaptive curves now. If you come down here where it says this current track, it has a default of, tr of curve track in there. That's going to be on every display at the newest updates. 
So what we need to do to delete current curves is we need to come in here and select new. So just like our straight tracks, they want us to start naming our adaptive curves. So once we create a new one, once we create a new one, we're going to have two adaptive curves up there. We can come back in, hit list cleanup, and delete the previous one. Reasoning for this is with naming adaptive curves, it gives us the option to use adaptive curves on swap track options. So, how many of you guys use your adaptive curves year to year to year? How many make new ones? Everybody. So, I've, given, I've kind of thrown out a few different ideas with that. A lot of times if you want to come in and hit new and call it 2013, that'll be all your adaptive curves for 2013. Next year when you go back to that field and you got the lines all over heck, if we hit new and call it 2014, those lines are gone. So pretty much what we got to be doing is every time you hit new and add it, it's just, still just like straight track. Also, this gives us an option for using those adaptive curves later. Say we're running an RTK situation, we can reuse those lines year after year for repeatability. Speaking of repeatability, how many of you guys see this on your screens when you start up the tractor? What do we say? No. How many times have you hit yes by accident? <laughs> Pretty much what this is, is with the repeat mode, on repeat mode, you're pretty much telling if you say yes, you're going to go into repeat mode, you don't want to make any new lines. You just want to run the ones you already have. So if you say no, it's saying yes, I want to keep making new ones. Nice thing is, this repeat box right here, they moved it right to our front page. Before we did have to go into guidance settings, curve track settings and then take the check mark out. Now we got it right here in our main page. So if we accidentally did hit repeat mode, or we got a hired guy that accidentally hit and said yes, all we got to do is come in here, take that check mark out, problem solved. Uh, you'll notice it if you accidentally do hit yes or go into repeat mode, your adaptive curve recording will be grayed out. It won't let you use it. <coughs> Tram lines. Have anybody heard of heard of or used these yet? How many seen them on the displays and wonder what the heck it was? <laughs> Tram lines is used quite a bit out in wheat country. Uh, pretty much what they're going to be doing is we can use guidance lines from smaller implements on bigger ones. So when we get out in the wheat country, they've got small air drills, but they usually have big 120 foot sprayers. So if we've got a 60 foot planter and 120 foot sprayer, our sprayer can use our planter guidance lines. But instead of on the screen going one, two, three, four, yep, that's my pass, I can tell the display I want to skip this many passes. It, so if I got a 60 foot planter here, this is my planter guidance line, that's going to be my sprayer line. So kind of takes a lot more of the guesswork out of it, makes it a little bit more streamlined. Uh, what they do out in wheat country is on the drills they actually have divert diverters. So it'll divert seed out of certain passes so that the sprayer tracks are already there. They're not running over any crops. So if you kind of see those in the pictures, that's exactly what they did is they got their tram line set. Every sprayer pass, they turn on those diverters every non sprayer pass, they're planting everything. So, every time we bump up, it's going to give us an extra pass. We cannot take take them and make them narrower. We got to start with the small or the smallest tracking first. Also, it is only used in our straight tracking mode. Cuz wheat country is pretty much all straight. How many Hillco machines do we got here? How many times have you guys had issues with tracking or using auto track? It gets a little bit difficult. The reason why 
as you can see, our cab stays flat. It takes the TCM right out of our receiver. So the TCM, our receiver, thinks it's, it's level, it's not making those adjustments on the hills. So what we've been doing is we've been setting our receiver on those machines down to 12 inches. So pretty much instead of way up here, we're saying we're right down here. It does help improve our tracking a little bit better. Advanced Auto Track. Have we got any guys kind of been messing with this a little bit? With the Advanced Auto Track, we do have a few stipulations that have to be met. We've got to be on an integrated Auto Track machine. Also, we have to have all the latest software updates, not only on the display, but on the tractor or combine. The biggest one is we got to have all the controllers updated. If we do just an SSU on our platforms, it will not work. It needs to talk to the CCU and everything else for those advanced auto track settings to be available. On the older machines, I'm talking like our 50 series, uh, early 60s, 20 series tractors, a lot of times these settings will not show up on your display, but they are in the right hand console stuck in the SSU. So if you want to do some of the advanced settings or you have an issue that you need them, you can contact the service managers and we can get you those addresses to get those adjustments. So with that auto, advanced auto track, we're going to be doing the same thing. Menu, green star, guidance, guidance settings. We can kind of go in there repeatedly. Right down there is going to be our advanced auto track settings. With our advanced auto track settings, it's giving us a lot more adjustments than just our sensitivity. There's a few times you get that sensitivity all the way down or you know just can't quite get it. This is going to give us a little more flexibility. As you can see, we do have quite a few adjustments. Now how many people know what all those symbols mean and what they adjust? Hopefully nobody, because I don't even know them all. So, we're starting to see this a lot more as that question mark. That question mark, once we hit that, it is going to talk to us or tell us about every single one, what it adjusts and which way we need to be moving it. So if we're getting this certain situation, maybe we need to move it up, maybe we need to move it down. With that, it'll go through every single one of them and show us. <coughs> so let's say we get some adjustments made and it actually made it worse. Right here, we have a button on this last page, is reset, restore to default settings. So if you've actually made adjustments, it just absolutely is absolutely getting worse. We can go back to restore default, try it again. Uh, if you already have some adjustments made and you knew they were working good, sometimes it's good to either write those numbers down or snap a picture before you make another adjustment so that you don't accidentally get yourself way, way off. Uh, any questions on advanced settings? Now with advanced settings, the part that you got to be careful for and you got to kind of figure out for yourself is, is this situation right to make adjustments on the advanced settings? So with that, one thing we got to watch for is where our ripper marks went. How many times are you in the tractor and it's going like this over every ripper mark? Advanced settings will not take that out. So the main thing we got to be watching for is our field conditions. Field to field, they could change. Day to day, they could change, depending on also our signal, too. So if we're getting right out here, nice flat area, and we're starting to get a little bit of a wiggle or a shimmy, or it's not quite picking that line up fast enough, that's where I'd be able to go back in and do some advanced settings. Row sense is kind of a love-hate child. Uh, when it works, it works great. When it don't, we have issues. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to work on a little bit more of the preset, pre-harvest settings on it. So first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that that sensor gaps at three quarters of an inch. There is a little bit of a leeway in there, but we're going to shoot for three quarters. How do we make those adjustments? Well, how many times have you guys walked out there, grabbed your snoots, pushed out, and it went from three inches to crossing? We need to try to get rid of that. So as you can see, once we pop our snoot up, we've got our unlock rod. On that unlock rod, there's two plates with four bolts. We can move those plates around to make sure we don't get any shifting inside of that rod. But then also, right below that, we got the holes that the rods go in. There's four bolts right on the row units you see there. We can loosen those bolts and kind of get them worked through to kind of get a lot of that shimmy and shake out of there. As you're going through the field, you do have some vibrations, you do have some movements. So we want to try to be able to get as much of that out of there as possible. These are just the adjustments that we talk about right now and a lot what they go through in the manual. There might be some other things you might want to try or do to try to get rid of that snoot slot. Because that's where a lot of our, our problems end up coming from is we get that gap a little too far and then it just doesn't quite sense fast enough. Once again, we want to try to get that three quarters inch of a gap while we're on the ground or when we're moving them. With the setup and calibration of it, older machines, 70 series and before, we're going to be going into the original Green Star emulator. If you go into an S series combine, that is actually done off the display, or off the, uh, display on the armrest. We're going to go through this one. It's going to hit majority of them. The calibration numbers between the both of them are going to look the same. So as we come in there, we're going to go into our setup, we're going to go into our auto track. As we come in there, we're going to go with our sensor calibration. To get into the, our sensor calibration, we're going to hit the button right next to where it says calibrate. How many times do you guys look at those numbers and say, that can't be right? It's a pretty big, big gap between two numbers. Well, they are right. The reasoning why is because one side uses, I think, two and a half and below, the other side uses three and above. So we're actually using two separate voltages for each side to give us our left and right. So if we do hit calibrate and we got a gap like that, that's normal. Also, we got our row set settings. There's another place we got to make sure that it's enabled. In, in uh, sometimes we go through and do our software updates. This will get to disabled. We just want to make sure that we got that enabled for it to work correctly. Diagnostics. How many times have you guys got in the tractor, kind of looked over, and everything should be working, but you got a piece of the pie missing? It happens to all of us. I know, I get the calls. So what we can do is if we come into menu Green Star, our diagnostics tab there, as we hit our drop down menu, it's gonna give us about every parameter that we could possibly do with our display. So let's say we're having a problem with our auto track. As we pick auto track, it gives us exactly what needs to be active and what part of the piece of the pie it is. So if we come down here and we're missing this slice, this is everything that needs to be working. So if we get one that says no, that's where we know we need to start with our, with our problem. It'll also go through, uh, section control is gonna be a big one for us. Uh, as we start getting into more of our variable rate planning, our boundaries, our different stuff like that. We had, did have a few issues where a boundary didn't get made correctly and it'll shut off the outside rows of our planner. How many people think that's the row unit's fault? A lot of people <coughs> go out there, pull wiring, we're going to check all that. 
Well, before we even leave the cab, we come into our section control, and right here, it's going to tell us what our row is being commanded to do. So if we go out there, and our row is commanded off because it's outside of an exterior boundary, no matter what we change or replace out there, it will never work. So this is kind of one way we can get that, you know, check that out, say, okay, yep, it should be on, it's out there, or come back in here and say, nope, it should be off, why? So then we can get that adjustment made. All the way down to just our simple row sense, we got some issues with that. Kind of lets us know, yes, no, real easy to work with. Any questions? That row sense uh, goes off the GPS here, right? Depending on what mode you're in. If you have a, if you have a line set up, it will use uh, the auto track guidance line, also with the feelers. If you do not have a line set up, it runs solely off the feelers itself. Uh, we have had some pretty good success with not even setting up guidance lines and relying on the feelers. It's... I got 20 inch shit, it's got, you know, kind of like straight feelers. Yeah, and that's just because of the narrow row spacing. They, they actually just come out straighter and then come back. But they should be three quarter of an inch. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yep. Yep. But the, so it's always recording. It runs right track. Uh, no. See, when you go back into your swap track, when you're swap tracking with adaptive curves, that's where naming comes in. Because of course, if you pick it, it's going to pick everything under that name. So if you've got how many of them in that same field, or how many different tracks, it'll show them all. So. Uh, but pretty much what it's going to be is as you're on your adaptive curves, it'll do the recording then, but once you swap away, it'll stop. <clears throat> Any other questions? Concerns? Issues? Uh, yeah, uh, on the S-Series combine, if, if we do start to see, especially the customers that are going to be getting new S-Series or even used ones, if we're starting to see a lot of this movement, uh, in the back left-hand tire, there's a sensor rod. Uh, it's adjusted wrong from the factory. Uh, actually, our machine sink combine that we had, it couldn't do a straight track and save its life, but we yanked that out, readjusted it, popped it back in, took care of it right now. So that's, that was one issue that, was, that should have been taken care of last year and we were informed it didn't. So if we do see a little bit of wiggling, uh, it will go back into the 70 series combines also. We start to see that shimmying, that could be that sensor rods uh, misadjusted. So if you got a year old machine, it's probably misadjusted. It's possible. Uh, if the customer, ne before you never used AutoTrack, you'd never know it. But if they used AutoTrack and complained, then it would have been fixed. Yeah, ours adjusted last year. Still didn't? Oh. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get my row sense to work at all. <laughs> like I said, row sense is a, is a love hate job. There's some people that absolutely love it and some people that can't stand it. Uh, well, uh, a, lot, a lot of it's on the patients. What about on that diagnostic screen? Yes. When I was planting corn this year, it didn't actually have it didn't actually go back to cold forward one. Like that last code issue where it said that. Oh, oh. Last yes. exit code issue. Yeah, last exit code issue. I didn't have anything in that box. That's perfect. That should be that. Yeah, but I could not have seen it. And I had to shut the whole system down. 
Uh, if it, it didn't have anything up here, uh, where did, did it say no anywhere through here? It all said yes. Uh, or is it his prayer? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's probably one of those magical things that just happens. Uh, a lot of times if it happens in his prayer, the, I didn't have any kind of code or anything. I never it didn't say, it didn't say Adam last year. Yep, but as soon as you reach out, it'll happen. Yeah. See, in, in Lance, Michigan, the sprayers, if they hit the wheels just right, you hit that sensor real quick, throw a fault, done. Um, we did have some issues with PVE valves to where it would kick out the auto track, but it would say, steering fault. Uh, a lot of times we replaced those, took care of it right away. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of issues on the R-Series yet, a lot of that was 30 and before. Is there any way to adjust the, the speed deactivation number for the auto track? So you don't have to do Because, well, like in the 4830, well, no, like can spray in third gear faster than the auto track will allow you, so you'd be going down a hill, and then you might not have to hear it, and all of a sudden your auto track kicks out. Yeah. I mean, all I need is one more mile an hour, just get that to about 22 <laughs> or so. No, that is all preset in the software. Uh, they did up the speed a little bit on those. That's what I wondered. Um, if they have the application speed, are they going to have to up the auto track speed too? Yes. Yes, I know uh, tractors was a big one. Uh, they did up the speed on them because of dry boxes. A lot more people were pulling their own dry boxes and they're cruising across the field. Before you couldn't barely go about 12 mile an hour and kick it out. So they are, they are making those adjustments along with the higher applications. <laughs> Any other questions? All right.